First verse. You are the Christ, O Lord, the Son of God most high, forever be adored, the name in earth and sky, in which no mortal strength may fail, the saints of God at last prevail. Gospel reading is Peter's acclamation, you are the Christ. So this, we'll sing that for the gradual. Please rise. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah, Lord, we praise your holy name. Glory. 
Glory, glory, hallelujah. Lord, we praise your holy name. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Lord, we praise your holy name. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Lord, we praise your holy name. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. The first reading is from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We'll say a portion of Psalm 116 together. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. The second reading is from James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. 
My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the singing of the gradual song number 254, You Are the Christ. <laughs> The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord Christ. Jesus went on his way with the disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and all the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want their, to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Christ, our Savior, our Messiah. Amen. Please be seated. You all may not realize it, but I've been here now with you just over a year. For some of you, it probably seems like forever, and some of you, well, it seems like even longer than that, right? No, it, and it's been a, my joy to be with you and serve with you uh, and to share with you. And you probably know uh, from the few times that I've had opportunity to share with you that often when I am reflecting on God or scripture, a song will pop into my head and I have one in particular as I was preparing for this message today, and this is a song that Pete Seeger wrote in 1959. It's based on a, a Bible scripture from Ecclesiastes in chapter 3, and he called the song Turn, Turn, Turn. Judy Collins covered this and recorded this cover five years after that, but it really, we didn't know that much about it until it became a number one hit by the birds in 1965. You probably know the refrain, and even if you were born sometime after that, I mean, that's to everything, turn, turn, turn. So you can sing it. There is a season, turn, 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 and a time for every purpose under heaven. So some of you all do know that, and some of you are just too shy to sing, I think. Now, this song comes to my mind because what it reminds me of is that there are multiple seemingly contrasting aspects that we find in our lives. Just as there are multiple and seemingly contrasting aspects that we find in our God. Even people who we might assume are fairly monochromatic have variations in their lives. I mean, come on. Do you really think that nuns and monks and clergy do nothing but sit around or stand around and pray all day? I don't think so. Their lives are just as conflicted and contrasting as any of ours. One example, though, that I'd like to kind of raise that's not in that song, but it made me think of that song. And I feel it's pretty important, but it may have slipped notice as Kathy was just reading the scripture from Isaiah. So I want to focus on that a wee bit. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher. Okay, show of hands, who here is or has been a teacher? I, I, I mean, I recognize that in this congregation, there seems to be an inordinate number of teachers, within, and which is a beautiful thing. I, I'm not trying to say that's a bad thing whatsoever. But I would propose to you that if you did not put your hand up, you may have just kind of let this passage gloss over you, thinking, oh, teacher's that, well, that's not me. However, I would beg to differ. Because in my mind, every person, every single one of us is, has been, and will be a teacher. We teach in many and all aspects of our lives, when you consider it, whether it be personal, or our family life, or with friends, in our professions. And yes, even here at church, in our spiritual lives. We teach people all around us all the time, and what we teach them is how much we love and we follow Jesus Christ. And we do that whether we recognize it or not. Now, this concept may be a bit of a challenge or may be new to you, but I want to continue on what Isaiah has to share with us today. Yeah, the Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, but then we go on. That I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. And you may be thinking, well, gee, how am I supposed to know that? By morning, by morning, God wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. 
rewind, wakens my ear, wakens our ears to listen to those who are taught, or as those who are taught. I find that very comforting. Really, really a, a, a hug in those words, quite frankly. Every day, any day, God is with us to waken my ears, to waken our ears. That is just one way of showing how much God loves us. How much God is with us. And the result? The result is that what we can do is that we can listen like those whom we teach, with whom we interact, with whom we have our life and our being. And when we do that, and only when we're able to listen, then we are able to teach. Then we are able to share. Then we are able to love. This is why this song from Pete Seeger comes to my brain, because it resonates. There is a time. There is a time. There is a time for all these things. A time when we need to listen and a time when we need to teach. I'll give you a personal story. When I, long ago, when I first went into sales in my professional career, I was not very good at it. Now, that's being kind. I was horrible at sales when I first started. I really was. I can say that now and, and without embarrassment. Now, I'll admit, I was really very good at knowing what we, our company, had to offer and the benefits that we could provide to healthcare professionals and to their patients. It was new stuff and it was really a, not really I would call a breakthrough, but a step ahead, a step forward. But me, I'd had a sales call. I would do what's called show up and throw up. Oh. Now, now, that's a phrase that later in my career I used a lot in sales training. That said, no, don't do that. But it really did apply to me in those early years because I was so excited about what we had to offer. I really wanted to also respect the time of those with whom I was meeting because their time was incredibly important. And so I wanted to show up, get there, and get things done, and boom, enlighten them. Yeah, right, uh-huh. And I would just spew out all the data and all the features, expecting them to say, oh, yes, Terry, bring it. Where can I sign? <laughs> my mistake, and my mistake really, was that I did not question my customers to ascertain what are their needs? What would benefit them? What would benefit their patients? I was not listening first to those that I needed to teach. I don't know about you, but I find that God acts in this way a lot. Listening first to us. For example, take this home that we just got done praying. We prayed indeed that God loves us, that God hears our voices. <laughs> you know, isn't that an amazing concept? It's not that, oh, maybe it is, so sometimes we consider that God is in some ethereal, heavenly, whatever realm, but I think this is what this is doing, is reassuring is that no matter what, God is here with us, listening to us, wherever we may be. God inclines an ear Whenever we call upon God, God listens and then God teaches. God shares. Again, just one more, one more assignation that God, of how much God loves us, no matter, no matter who we are, no matter what we may have done or maybe what we may not have done. And it certainly and raises in my heart a smile and I beam with that because what that assures me is that we walk in the presence of God in the land of the living, not some all far off time or place or space or a galaxy far, far away. God is here. God is now. God is today and every day. 
But we also have to keep in mind, and James, this letter from James that Kathy also read for us, brings us a note of caution with this about teaching. Our words, our actions, probably more than our words, when we teach, our actions and words can both bless God and our actions and words can curse those who are made in God's likeness. God's own creation, yes, indeed, what comes out of our mouths will sometimes curse them. James shares that this should not be so. Now, if you consider this, for those of y'all who were here a couple of weeks ago when Pastor Loretta uh, was preaching on that passage from Mark, that it's an echo of that gospel. If you recall, Jesus was telling the Pharisees that it's not what we take into our bodies that defile us, that make us bad, that make us wrong. It's what comes forth from us, from our words and from our actions, that can be the problem. If somebody, us or somebody we know or see or read or hear about, anybody, if they are out and espousing or acting in a way about how good that they might be a follower of Jesus Christ, well, that's all well and good, but at the same time, they or we cannot, at the same time, we cannot be calling others names, putting them down, tearing them down, or whatever the case may be of trashing that which is around us, that which is God's creation and people. What James is relating to the early Christians and to you and to me is that there is an accountability. There is a responsibility. There is a cost in living as followers of Jesus Christ. And that we get, it's not so easy just to show up and throw up. It is important to be aware of what we say and what we do when we shouldn't be saying or doing them. And it's also just as important that we are not speaking up or acting out when we should be. Now, the first situation may be a little bit obvious and more common, but I want to bring up more about the latter, about maybe we should be speaking up or acting out. I'll consider a, a paraphrase of something that Martin Luther King once said. When there's injustice anywhere, there's a threat to justice everywhere. When there's an injustice, there's a threat to justice. And those are the times when we should not be holding ourselves back. But instead, as we listen, as we experience, as we see, that's the time to act. And that is the time to speak. And when you think about it, that's exactly what Jesus showed us what to do. Because, of course, more importantly than us, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Now, we take a look at the gospel reading from today. We find that Jesus and the disciples, they're in a transition. Sometimes this is called a liminal point or like a, passing almost like through a doorway. The writer of Mark's gospel places this story right smack dab in the middle of the whole book of Mark. It's right, it's so it's a critical turning point. It's this hinge of where Jesus is going. Jesus is transitioning. He's making the move from alerting folks about God's love and rule, and he's up in the north around Galilee. And he's starting to make his way south to Jerusalem and to make this a very personal and poignant story and involvement for everyone, not just him, but how we must be following the love of God. It's this transition. And so he starts a conversation, and kind of, you can imagine it kind of going like this if you're the fly on the wall, proverbially. Hey, what are you all hearing about me? Jesus says. The disciples, ah, you're John the Baptizer, or they're saying that maybe you're one of the prophets of old. Ah, you could be Elijah. You know, it's one of those really important dudes from the Bible, right? And Jesus responds something like, ah, oh, well, that's good to know. But hey, what about y'all? What about you? What do you say? 
and Peter speaking up for the crew. <laughs> I, I just love Peter. Oh, you're the Messiah. You're the man, right? You're the chosen one. And Jesus kind of passes us off almost, saying, well, that's true. But don't go blabbing about that. Don't go out just, no, hold, hold back. Hold yourselves back. This is one of those times to check that in a bit. We find Jesus in this conversation. First, he's listening. Then he seizes upon what he hears so he can teach. He hears and probably expected to hear from his closest friends that they believe him to be the chosen one. But do they really understand what the chosen one comes to do? The popular opinion of the Pharisees and the Jewish leaders and the Jews themselves is that the chosen one will come to save the Hebrew people. Remember, they're being oppressed and under Roman rule, right? And they're looking to be set free. And of course, as you can imagine, the disciples are in that mode. We would be as well. And Jesus is there to take the teaching moment to say, no, that's not quite the way it should be. That may be the way that the leaders and the, and the Pharisees, they may see it that way. That's not necessarily how God sees it. And as we have been hearing Jesus all along through the gospel, is that he's telling the Pharisees and the scribes, no, it's, it's different. It's not how you believe it. The disciples also are defining him in this, as Messiah in that way, that same context. No wonder Jesus is telling them, hold your horses, don't take that message out. Not yet. Because you need to know God's way, not the human way. You know, after hearing these responses, and Jesus is telling his disciples about who the Messiah really should be and is, this son of humanity. And maybe, and I should say a lot of scholars will label this description that Jesus is now giving to us as being the suffering servant. And it's a role that is very against the mode of what the Messiah is supposed to be. Is the Messiah supposed to come in and kick the Romans out and we're the chosen people? Oh, wait a minute. What do you mean we're going to suffer and be rejected and to die and to rise again? Those contrast and don't necessarily fit. But it means something for Jesus to share this with the disciples. We, in this post-Christian era, which we really are in, we can look back at this and say, oh, Jesus is talking about Good Friday and the crucifixion. Well, maybe not so much. I can't say that Jesus wasn't. But I think more what Jesus is teaching the disciples and what Jesus is teaching us is about the cost. The cost of following him and loving God as we need to love God. Now, don't be thinking about the part that getting rejected by the elders and, and being arrested, that that's all just kind of a debate kind of a thing, and it's just easy peasy because it isn't. We may use phrases like, well, it's going against the grain or swimming upstream, and it's kind of pass it off, and yeah, we can we buckle up and we can do that, but it's more than that that Jesus is trying to relate to them. It was a real hardship for Jesus to try to lead people to to teach about how and who the Messiah really is. It was a real hardship for him. It was a real hardship for the people, for the disciples. It's been a hardship ever since then, and it includes being a hardship for you and for me. The challenge, my friends, the challenge is actively sharing God's love, while at the same time, we speak truth to the power that is around us. It's no wonder that Peter takes Jesus aside to correct him. Yo, Jesus, that ain't right. No, you got it wrong, man. You're supposed to lead us out of this oppression. And Jesus, upon hearing this, and probably Jesus was expecting it, 
Jesus has another teaching moment. Did you notice that what does Jesus do? Here's Peter trying to take him aside, maybe trying to spare him of some embarrassment to say, hey, Jesus, that's not really the way it goes, right? But Jesus, noticing the disciples around them, takes that opportunity to conclude everyone in the room to say, Peter, you're thinking and talking in the old ways, not in God's ways. You're thinking humanly. I want you to be thinking as God wants us. That's different. And then Jesus amplifies that. Not being satisfied with just talking with Peter and the disciples, he now expands that to everyone, to the crowd, to us included. This is such an important point that Jesus wants us all to take it in. This is what God expects of the Messiah, and it's not what folks, maybe even you or me today, had known or wanted for all their lives. And as we are Christians, we need to learn this as well. Taking up our cross and following Jesus probably doesn't reflect directly onto Jesus' crucifixion. Our minds typically goes to that, right? But it's more than just that crucifixion. It probably points more directly that every single person has a choice. We can follow in the way of love and mercy for God and for others, or not. We can go in our own way. Now, we Christians literally and symbolically do take up our cross at our baptism. I don't know if you've considered that. Because it's at our baptism, we are marked as Christ's own forever. You'll note that we take holy oil and we mark a cross on the person who's being baptized. And we say, you are marked as Christ's own forever. Now, the Jews at Jesus' time, they were also known to brand themselves with oil in the form of a tall, the Hebrew letter tall, or we would look at it as more of a T. It's a cross. And they did this as a sign of repentance, a correction of themselves, a denial of themselves, right? As they were turning back to God. And Jesus was more likely referring to that practice rather than really pointing ahead to this Roman form of execution. But most importantly, as we consider all this, how does all of this apply to us here in this 21st century? Now, Jesus models for us the love that we also must apply in this day and age. And let's face it, friends. I think that Jason, Jason excuse me, Jared Isaacman said it well during his spacewalk. Back at home, we all have a lot of work to do. But from here, Earth sure looks like a perfect world. That first part, we have a lot of work to do. God's creation, our society, our community desperately needs God's love. It's our part as God's people to put in the work, that work of love, that work of mercy, that work of kindness, that work of forgiveness, that work of justice. And you're probably thinking in your minds, I would be, Terry, <laughs> there's so much need. It's, it's really, it's overwhelming. I mean, how could I even start? Well, I think we start just as God does, just as Jesus does, just as Elijah wrote. Just like so many others that you and I have known in our lives, those who have been examples to us of love, we begin by listening. We allow God to awaken our hearts every morning, every noon, every night, so we can listen. We allow God to do this so that we can make and take the time to open the ears of our hearts to one another, to hear of others' love, like Right here, at, maybe at St. Aidan's, maybe even at coffee hour. And we start there because when we start with those whom we know and we love, that's kind of comfortable and comforting to us. And it's enjoyable. But then we need to go beyond that. Then we try to make and take the time 
to listen to those whom we maybe don't know so well. We start to expand or go outside of our comfort zones and maybe even with those who express polar opposites of where we necessarily want to be. That's one way of taking up our cross, of going outside our comfort zones. Because when we do that, that means we are in fact denying a part of ourself. It means that we are placing importance to someone else more than our own self. Of course, this also does mean going against popular culture. You know, we're kind of on this for ourselves. That's what our culture teaches us. Especially in today's fractured society, which is even more amplified. Here we are in election season. I mean, think about it. How often have you seen our political leaders, or just leaders in general, media people even, how often have we seen them actually listening to people who may be outside of their comfort zones? I mean, we seem to thrive on this idea of gotcha. We're trying to catch somebody out instead of actually trying to listen to what is in their hearts. And when we listen to their hearts, we may not agree. I'm not saying that we need to or we must. But I'm saying we need to listen and share our hearts and clarify. When we make this effort to actively listen, that means something to God. It means something to other people. It means something to this creation. When we do that, that in itself is a teaching moment that we take the time and effort and energy to do that. It is an action of love. It is an action of sharing. It's an action of mercy. It's an action of forgiveness. It's an action of justice. And we start just one person at a time, and then another, and then another, another, and so on. When we do this, and I encourage us all to do this. Because when we do this, there is a ripple effect. And that ripple effect can be life and world changing. So another song pops into my mind. It's from a, more than a few years ago. You may recognize it or remember it. But when we do this, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. Pass it on. Thanks be to God. Stand as you are able, and let us affirm our faith in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one, one God. God. The, the Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe, believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten God of the Father, God, God from God, God, God light from God, light, true, true God from true God, God, God begotten, God, not made, of one being with the Father. Through, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
The prayers of the people. We lift up our hearts and our voices for God's presence in our lives as we ask God to direct, direct our, our hearts, hearts to, to proclaim, proclaim Jesus, Jesus in our, our actions and, and words. We pray for your church and our leaders, Michael, our presiding bishop, Sean, our presiding bishop-elect, Bishop Matt, Mother Esther, Deacon Terry, and Pastora Loretta, that all of us will go out to feed your people with your love. Direct, Direct our, our hearts, hearts to proclaim Jesus, Jesus in our, our actions, actions and, and words. words. We pray for this community at St. Aidan's as we are called to be your light and loving presence through faith, sacrament, and outreach. Direct, Direct our, our hearts to, to proclaim Jesus in our, in our actions and, and words. We pray for those who experience lack of food, lack of faith, and lack of security in our community, our state, and nation, especially the Haitians in Springfield and this world, that we may provide comfort and safety and serve them with your overflowing cup of hope and peace. Direct our, our hearts, hearts to, to proclaim, proclaim Jesus, Jesus in, in our, our actions, actions and, and words. words. We pray <clears throat> for this nation, especially our public leaders and those vying for election, for wisdom, respect, tolerance, and patience, that their actions and words lead to peace and reconciliation. Direct our, our hearts, hearts to proclaim Jesus, Jesus in, in our, our actions, actions and words. We pray for all those who cannot be with family and loved ones, and those who feel lonely or are estranged, that they might share your comfort, and together we are bound in love. Direct our hearts to proclaim Jesus in our actions and words. We pray for all who have died as they now abide in you and give thanks for your grace through them. Direct our hearts to proclaim Jesus in our actions and words. Let us open our hearts, our hands, and our voices to allow God's presence to shine through us to this fractured world that through us our neighbors experience God's bountiful love, peace, and joy. As we proclaim you as Christ in our lives, we listen and see Jesus and all our neighbors. On this glorious day, let us take the opportunity to give thanks for the many, many blessings that we find in our lives. And I encourage you to take a moment to actually name one or some of those blessings that you find either aloud on your lips or silently in your hearts. And give thanks for family and especially for Lorraine, for this gathered community, the presence of you, O oh Jesus. I ask your prayers for the work and mission of the church worldwide, particularly in the Angli Anglican communion of which we're a part, for the work and mission of the people of the Church of Nigeria in the Anglican communion. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and our diocese within this, our Ho-Chunk mission region. We pray for those who are involved in education, for the Lutheran Episcopal Campus Ministry, at UW-Whitewater, for Neshota House Seminary, and for St. John's Northwestern Military Academy. And here, within our faith community of St. Aidan's, we pray and give thanks for those who participate in, on the Sharing Sunday of the Little Pantry, for those who will be involved in cleaning up Highway 83, for our vestry who will be meeting later today, for our outreach committee that will be meeting later this week. And of course, we lift up and give thanks for those of our young people, for formation for young and old, and for those who teach and listen. Let us also give thanks for those who are first responders or health care providers in our community. We give thanks for those who serve the greater community in our military, for Sean, Ethan, and Juliana. <coughs> And let us also remember in our prayers those who travel either away from us or back to us for renewal, refreshment, and rejoicing. 
I ask your prayers for this well for those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit, and many need of Christ's healing grace, particularly for Eric, Anne, Lynn, Lindsay, Megan, Melinda, Sarah, for Mickey, the Tim, Charlie, Liam, Lena and her family, for Fred, Pat, Steve, Chris, Barbara, Dan, Mary Ann, Jan and Mike, for Bert, Elliot, Dave, for Lois, Bob, Don, Harold, Nancy. Are there others? We pray for comfort and a warm embrace from Christ for those who grieve a loss, particularly for the Marinell family, for the Hoffman family, for Ted, for the Lenz family, the Talakowski family, and for the Neem family and friends. And so we lift up and give thanks for those who have gone before us and who are now dwelling in Christ's nearer presence, particularly for Barbara, Peter, Connie, Sandy. Are there others? Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion on us and all who turn to you for help. For you are a lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And, and also with you. Let us greet one another. Peace be with you. Yeah. Oh. Peace. Mickey, I'm behind you. Peace be with you. They want to surprise you. Peace, y'all. Peace, Mike. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, y'all. Peace, Jack. Peace, y'all. Peace, sweetie. Peace, Tom. Yes. Peace, Tom. Peace, Tom. Peace, y'all. Peace. 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 Peace, Dad. Peace. Peace, y'all. Peace. Peace. Peace, y'all. Hey, we have a whole bunch of announcements. Birthdays to celebrate. Let's do that. We've got two birthdays coming up this week. Fido Mercado is celebrating a birthday on the 18th. And the next Saturday, Mickey Hoffman is celebrating a birthday. So let's pray. Thank you. Come on up here. Let's pray for all those celebrating birthdays. I won't even ask. <laughs> let's pray for all those celebrating birthdays this week. Let us pray. Our oh God, God, our, our times, times are in your hands. Hand. Look, Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, I think we actually don't have any listed here. Are there any anniversaries that we would be celebrating this week? Any of All right, well, let's pray for people who are celebrating birthdays, or excuse me, anniversaries anyway, uh, out there in video land or wherever um, people we know. Let us pray. Oh God, God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Happy anniversary. All right. Um, you see the announcements in the bulletin. We um, don't have the, the cleanup today in the bulletin, but Judy is organizing that, and we've got folks to meet with you after the service. Yes, I hope you, um, we can get a number of you to get help out with their road cleanup. You know we did it every spring and fall. And, um, but I want you to grab some coffee and snack and stuff first before you join us. So that we'll meet down, you know, on Highway 83, most of you that are elk and in the area. And you can pull off 83 and you just pull around with the dumpster stuff. That's where we meet. And I'll be down there to get you. I have your gloves and stuff so you can do a pickup. So hopefully it won't take real long. I know Patrick is playing today and it's hot. Oof. Thank you, Judy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we have uh, the uh, pantry items to bring forward. Come on up, and uh, we will pray for our pantry items. Um, this month is the uh, this is the third Sunday of the month. Let us pray for the pantry. Almighty Creator. We give, we give you thanks that you have opened your hand in due season and provide an abundance of good things. Out of, Out of love for you, help us to be obedient to your command to feed the hungry, that our, our love for our neighbors will reflect our love for you. Send your spirit to be among us and fill us with compassion for those in need. Amen. It's my honor here today to um, bring another member of our family that's actually a member of our family to join this church community here, and I ask you to welcome him. He came to the Itzhoff family in 1973. In 1973, he came here under a program called Youth for Understanding. So very much in keeping with uh, Terry's very nice sermon, um, this organization was actually a creation of a uh, church council in Ann Arbor, of which a member of that council uh, and leader of this program was Greta's uncle, John Walters. The program was started right after World War II. The program basically was this. Bring in youth from all over the world. Bring them into your families. As the youth understand each other, they're much less likely to ever. So it's a really beautiful thought that brought Jose Guzman to our family. And we ask you to welcome him to our church family as well. We will have a coffee coming up. And that coffee hour is sponsored by our own Bert and Loretta. And of course, the Bemi and Fitzhaw families as well. If you come to this, I can guarantee you're going to uh, have a lot of fun talking to Jose. And you can speak to him either in Spanish or in English. He, he speaks both. <laughs> Um, he started out as a chemical engineer after his high school experience. In fact, he's here representing the 50th anniversary of the Menominee Falls High School uh, reunion. That's what he came to town for. So 
it's um, a, a fun time to celebrate with him, and I'd ask you to do so. Um, Jose really accomplished exactly what that program set out to do. He came to understand us. We understood him. He comes originally from Venezuela and uh, has done marvelous things here in the United States and in South America. He's a chemical engineer. He worked in the oil and energy industry, and um, he continues to work even though he's retired, supposedly. He continues to work on a really, really important program uh, that has to do with energy here in the United States, and that is 3D um, building. And the idea is to build low income for homes for low income families. His son is piloting this. He is offering his chemistry background to help with the mixtures that go in to make the, these homes. And uh, very interesting stories he can tell you. I'd ask you to. Uh, Please come up and introduce yourselves in, uh, to Jose. Um, I think you'll come to find, as I have, that he is probably the second most. The sec he's probably the second most interesting man in the world. And I, I, I only, he doesn't have a beard, so he can't be number one. And I think Jesus will. <laughs> so please come, ask him questions. I think you're going to really be excited to to speak with Jose. He brings just a wealth of stories to tell us all. So please come and meet my friend, Jose Guzman. Welcome him here to the church family. Thank you, Dan, and welcome home. Thank you. Oh, one last thing. He also became a citizen of the United States last year. Oh, there he is. as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Please rise for our offertory hymn, number 335, I am the bread of life, I am the resurrection. We will sing verse 1, verse 4, and verse 5.
also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your By will, your they were created and have their being. Be. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the ruler of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you revealed, you sent your son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus of prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. <laughs> We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Leah and Rachel, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, God, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Let us pray the words Jesus teaches us. Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. A cup of salvation. Does anybody else want the common cup? The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
blood of Christ and cut the salvation. Stand as you are able and let us pray. Almighty and And ever-living God, God, we thank thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, O oh God, God, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love, love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Bless our Lord God, this church home, that in it there may be health, purity, and the strength of humility, goodness, mercy, the fulfillment of your law, and thanksgiving. May the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit remain with you now and on this church home and upon you this day forward. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is number 522, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. We'll sing verse 1 and 2 and think of flowing out as living waters to work in God's world.
Let us, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.